Well, look at that. Blue skies. Perfect for a trip down the seawall. That's where we're going today. Oh, and part three of bygones as well. Hello again. Just want to share a story as we start off. Uh, my regular subscribers will have heard of the uh, chicken hot pot from Morrison Saga that went on for a few weeks trying to get them. And a um, little update on that. It's quite funny actually. I think you'll appreciate it. First train of the day, lovely. Did I mention I got the wind blocker off? Well, I have anyway. Right, back to my story. So there's been this, this traffic jam, traffic works, road works, been preventing me from getting to Morrison's recently. And yesterday, it seemed to evaporate. So I shot over there. And when I got there, unfortunately, I found the freezers looking like this. As you see, that's where my ready meals, my chicken hot pots live. And the freezer itself is completely empty. And there's a sign on it saying it's broken. Lovely. So I head over to customer services to see whether or not they don't have any at all or they've just relocated them somewhere else. It's quite a big store. And um, lovely lady there on customer services, very helpful. And when I happened to mention in conversation that it was really the chicken hot pots I was after, because I wanted to order about 20 of them. She said, oh, you're not Bill's Throne Timmouth, are you by any chance? <laughs> I said, yes, I am. So after she'd given me a satisfactory explanation of what the situation was with the fridge and when it would be fixed, etc., I had to ask her, I said, how did you, how did you know then? Did you recognize my voice? And she said, no, no, I don't watch you. I thought, oh, okay. She said, it's my parents are absolutely obsessed with you. Oh, lovely, okay. So yes, they even rang me up from Australia to ask me why Bill can't get his chicken hot pots. What's wrong with Morrison's? So thank you very much to the uh, customer services ladies' parents who live in Australia for thinking of me. Much appreciated. And it goes to show how far this channel reaches that they rang up to find out why I can't get my hot pots and why I had to do something called a click and collect, apparently. <laughs> anyway, all good. That's the saga of the chicken hot pots part two. So just a nice simple wall walk today without the wind blocker on. See some trains, get some steps in. When I get up the other end, provided it's not too rough of course. Oh train! Hello! Yes, provided it's not too rough when I get up there. I'll probably walk up and down on that part of the seawall for a long time just to get the steps. Little bit splashy, but I'll risk it for a biscuit. Got my shorts on anyway. Worst case scenario, I'll get a pair of wet socks. <laughs> and I'll just take a moment to welcome all my new subscribers. Uh, thank you ever so much for subscribing. It's appreciated because in the uh, last 10 days, I've had over 40 subscribers. So quick rush on you thank you very much indeed That's a canoe up ahead. I couldn't work out what it was as I was walking up looking. I don't think it's a part of a roof of a car or something that washed up there, but that's a reasonable thing to find at Spray Point, I suppose. Lovely to see the letters in the sun. May even take my fleece off and tie it around my waist in a minute. Never know. Whee!
Looks like I can get along the wall there. It's not splashing up over with the waves. Great. I was actually just about to film over there again. Even more of it has been cleared. Hmm. Yeah, certainly warm. Uh, the fleece has now been removed and is round my waist. And I think I heard a train. Let me check. Yes, that was a happy train at Spray Point. Tootie wooty. Tootie fruity. So much nicer without the wind blocker, isn't it? Ah, nearly missed that one as well. Didn't hear it coming up behind me. Too busy looking at the waves splashing up where I stand to film Salty Dog, and wondering if I'm going to get wet. There we are, Salty Dog, lovely. Enjoy a hot chocolate from there in the winter. Smash in. Right, let's go back to Bygones for the final part of my Babacom adventure. Here you go, Bygones, part three. Anderson Shelter. Oh, hello. I triggered that. That works, it should. Bed and breakfast, my granny. All her washing on the line. There she is, in the Anderson Shelter. Which I really don't understand that they were supposed to. Oh, hello, she's looking at me. You're moving. Hello, hi. Um, how they were supposed to protect you from a bomb from above. But I suppose they did, or they would have done, or they should have done, or it's just one of these things where it's just selling you a sense of security. I don't know. There's a handbag. Should we nick something? No, we best not. Oh, well, she's certainly got a very full Anderson shelter, hasn't she? More stuff in there than her house, probably. We'll leave her be, wishing her good luck for a bombing raid. Will we see some more stuff from the wall? Powdered eggs, a delicacy. Clothing book. Clothing was rationed too, wasn't it? She's got her windows all taped up. So if they get bombed and the glass breaks, they won't shatter in. We're now entering Piccadilly, the war trench at the Somme. Children must be accompanied by adults for the World War I trench. Beware, the trench is dark and noisy with an uneven floor. Oh, scary, scary. Someone complaining about pain behind me. They want to help. No, sorry, can't help you today, Of course, it's not as dark on the phone as it is in real life. So if I'm sort of slowing down a little bit, it's because I'm checking, oh, hello, deliberately a soft bit of floor there to make me feel I'm sinking down into sand. What are you doing in there? Wake up, mate, it's a war on. There we go, that was the trench. A bit more memorabilia, but I think from the other side.
wireless and television toys. Toys that were advertised on TV, obviously. <laughs> Muffin the mule. Guys, certainly a few things that bring back a few memories in there. I used to have one a train like that once, the green one. Had a key, it wound up on the side and it went along. Ah, oh, the um, flower men. Can't think what they were called. This side appears to be mostly sweets. Yes, confectionery. This is Babacom Stores, it says. You are now looking at Bygone's Victoria Street in Mitchell. Most people who come into Bygone's want to know how did we do it and why. It all began with a steam engine. One day, my husband went out and came home with a 28 tonne. I hope you can hear this in the background. Engine. He had seen it advertised in his railway magazine and purchased it. So he bought that tank, that engine, steam engine we were looking at earlier. We already had a house full of railway armour. The walls were covered in engine nameplates. Oh, I see, that's a painting of that train at Falmouth Docks where he got it from. That one was working. Train memory earlier. Oh. We have our hobbies into a business. Our family have run several businesses over many generations, from my great-grandfather's saddlers and toppers, to newsagents and confectioners, and now bygones today. We hope you have enjoyed your visit and will tell all your friends. Oh, there's the train. The coming family. Ken. Pat. Richard. And Amanda. Well, we I'm going to tell about a thousand people soon. nearly. So, all good. One last look around the um, diff thing. Cheers. And go back into the sunshine. Up St Mary Church. Oh, there we go. Well, again, that was something certainly different. And that's just another section in this Babacom part I'm doing. All good. And I'll see you back in the future. So there we go, that was Bygones. Almost the end of my Babacom adventure. I've got one more thing though I took in Babacom which I'll come up at some point soon. I won't say what it is though. Well, it's interesting, to me anyway. <laughs> I just thought maybe that grassy area there, there's a way up along there behind those bushes and they're gonna have a little seating area for the salty dog. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? little update on the waterfall to be fair I expected it to be a lot more than this but it isn't with the rain Whee! right I've done a lot of running up and down or walking up and down here not running so I'm gonna head back now hopefully I don't get too wet on this little segment ahead
Well, that was surprisingly successful. All the waves I've been watching and sort of doubting about walking back dispersed and I walked by unhindered. Perfect. Birdies! Trainees! Happy train! Looks like the clouds are coming in again over town. Not ideal. Still got the low sand in the bottom of the wall showing up here. Well, I've waited down here for quite a while now. I don't think I'm going to see any more trains. It's going to head up home. Certainly some moody views just past the nest. Not sure if it's going to pick up what I can see with my naked eye. But a lot of different shades of grey. Looks nice to me anyway. Hopefully it will translate for you on the screen. Interesting sort of view. You can see parts of the seafront or the road here are closed off. That's probably to stop people parking there when the water was crashing over. Probably, I'm guessing. Anyway, up near Lane now by the Thornhill. Not going to do any then and nows today because we've had bygones, which is basically a six minute then and now in so, in so many words. But um, yeah, I'll be doing one tomorrow. Here we go, top of Mere Lane and the permanent year round Christmas tree, which I'm sure will soon be getting decorated up in a month or so's time. There we go, walk comes to an end. Hope you enjoyed that. Unfortunately, a large funeral taking place behind me at the Catholic Church. I'm not filming in the normal direction I do at the end of these videos. That's okay, don't want to film anyone in their grief. And um, hope you enjoyed that. So I'll see you again tomorrow, somewhere else. Do some then and nows. All good. Take care. Thanks for subscribing. Bye.